even preventable things that were happening. He wasn't really trying to help be better or anything. All he did was retreat, protect his assets and stuff, and, you know, fuck it. Whatever happens, let it happen, which was wrong. Being in a situation where um, you all have something to lose if something went sideways. You all try to fight to make things work. So what he did was, at that point of moving the, everything to his, into his mom's names and stuff, made him not responsible. It made him uh, stop being accountable and even trying to make the relationship actually work. So there I fault him. He wasted the lady's time and he deserves to pay. So just um, uh, I wanted to ask ask your opinion on Sabi. Well, what you think about uh, this whole Ashraf Hakimi Sabi? You know Ashraf Hakimi, the Moroccan footballer. <laughs> yes, Last the week. king, the greatest of all. Yeah, the king. Yes, men uh, are calling him the father of uh, the Godfather right now. That's, that's the Godfather of, of all that's Godfathers. That's one of the titles they've given him. Yes, <laughs> the Igwe. <laughs> That boy is something. I, I'm told he's been invited to be a keynote speaker at the next, uh, the, men's the next men's conference. <laughs> yeah, he should be. He should be. He should be. A lot whoever, of lessons to learn. Whoever from is him. in charge, mm -hmm. I think whoever is in charge. Uh, some of my feminist friends might not agree with me, but I, I think whoever is in charge should invite him. <laughs> <laughs> Hakim is. Should he, make. Should make a point to reach out to him. The boy is something <laughs> else. He's broken all records and yeah. set a new standard for how business should be done in the in, in line of uh, relationships yeah. yeah so what's up what's up with hakim yeah like, yeah like you had the story of being you know, all over social media yeah like his wife mm -hmm. went to wait and filed for divorce But uh, the court actually informed her that her millionaire husband actually does not have any assets. She wanted the assets to be divided 50, like 50 percent of his assets to be given to him, to be shared between him and her. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but she was told he has no money at all. <laughs> nice. You know, Hakimi, uh, to be honest, I think he should even be the greatest footballer of all time. <laughs> no, 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 there you get there. <laughs> He's one of the best right now, but the greatest of all time. Man. Of all time. It, it's the, the field is crazy. Big. <laughs> it's crazy because, you see, we can, we can call him the, God, uh, the godfather of the, of the men's conference. Mm. But uh, well, when it comes to football, I mean, nah, no, not yet, not yet. Not yet there. <laughs> not yet there. I know. So, uh, Hakimi, Ashraf Hakimi. Ash yeah, Hakimi is, uh, to be honest, I was super impressed with what he did. I know, women are not going to agree. Ladies, especially the feminists, like you said, they won't agree. But, um, one, by the time somebody chooses to do that transfer all their properties into their mother's names it means they've been there are things that you're doing that you know don't make a lot of sense and they are honestly worried <laughs> that things might go sideways anytime all right so that's when they end up doing all that shifting and uh what what, what really the genius in that is him being patient letting the lady sue go through the process call him you know, filed everything that needed to be filed. I wanted to be told at the last to tell them at the last minute that hey guys, I am actually the richest poor man you've ever come across. But they're like, wait a minute, you have A, B, C, D. He's like, no, I, I have nothing. All the things don't belong to me, they belong to my mom. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So um it, it was genius. You yeah. know, one thing I've noticed in Europe and in those other countries. I've seen this from the likes of a boy. I think, was that guy called a boy or something? Yeah, yeah. Did he commit? Did he commit suicide? No. He, he's alive. He's, he's alive. alive, but he's but not he's well. He's not as wealthy as 
No, he's actually okay. He's not broke, but uh, he does not have as much money as he should have had. Because Thank you. He had the same. He had something similar happen to him where his yeah. wife was in charge of all their accounts and everything. And when they broke up, she took a big chunk of his wealth and he was. Yeah, he's not poor. He's not. He's not a broke man. I mean, <laughs> but he's not. He, he's yeah, not he lost either. a large yeah. chunk of his wealth to mm. his wife. Mm. I don't know if you can say lost because, as people say, uh, she uh, the the part, partners also deserve a share for the time they have been mm. in the relationship. Mm. Yeah. People say that, that that's what's fair. <laughs> they say that's what's fair. Very, it's, it's, it's a payment for some the time they've actually, lasted. Yeah. yeah, some people actually are uh, feeling so sad for uh, for Hakimi's. I don't know if she's not yet her ex wife. She's not yet her ex wife, but they're feeling sad for her. Like, yeah. uh, she ends up having almost nothing. And the twist to it all is now that Hakimi has nothing. Yeah. She's the one to share most. I, of I mean, her that's what's going to happen. So, <laughs> from, from what I had, from what I had is she has. She, about... yeah, she, 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 she's not a poor. She, she, I don't think she, she's not poor. She's got about two million pounds, I'm told, in assets and stuff. So what's going to happen is she's going to share the little she has with Hakim to help him because he's the broke one in the relationship. And uh, which, which I think is perfectly right. If the whole idea of breakup was not to take the man's assets, all right? She should be comfortable. She should be comfortable, yes. Be comfortable. <laughs> but if the whole idea was, you know, to make the man broke and everything, probably rip him off. I mean, that was so unfair. But then the other thing yeah, also yeah. that I don't agree with, really, in this whole situation is, by the time you choose to move all those assets into your mother's yeah, names, it means you've been preparing for this. So all the mishaps that have been happening in their relationship, she wasn't Like doing, he saw it coming. Not even that he saw it coming. Even preventable things that were happening. He wasn't really trying to help be better or anything. All he did was retreat, protect his assets and stuff, and, you know, fuck it. Whatever happens, let it happen. Which was wrong. Being in a situation where... Um, you all have something to lose if something went sideways. You all try to fight to make things work. So what he did was at that point of moving the, everything to his into his mom's names and stuff made him not responsible. It made him uh, stop being accountable and even trying to make the relationship actually work. So there I fault him. He wasted the lady's time and he deserves to pay. But then the lady filing for divorce, if she filed in the name of getting wealthy, that was uh, the grossest miscalculation that has happened in the history of <laughs> miscalculation. <laughs> you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's... yeah, but we need to give it to him. That was a genius move. Imagine he hadn't done that. Right now he would be... No, that, was, that, that was a genius move. Rich but... by half, yeah. you know. Yeah. Yeah, he would have lost a lot. Yeah. If we actually... When when a boy lost a lot of his money, I felt sorry for him because uh, uh, I'm not an Arsenal fan, but uh, uh, the fact that he was an African, there's something about an African playing in the Premier League that I always that always makes me feel proud. So I felt bad, and it was actually I'm not racist, but it was a white woman that took almost half of half of his fortune. I felt bad for somebody who hustled all the way from <laughs> Ivory Coast. I mean, Ivory Coast, looking at their GDP and economy, they're not so different from Uganda. So it's easy for us to relate with them. So I sure. felt bad. I'm like, yo, this boy hustled from the hood. He made it to England. Yes. And then this happened. But then I think, to, to be honest with you, I think this thing is, uh, is, is delib it's a deliberate move. But, but because this but guy is not the only one. Not I've heard stories like that, but mm. you see, uh, you see the thing with uh, the European and first world countries. I've heard many stories like that. Yeah. Uh, you know somebody, you know it's a Ugandan legend called Maddox, Sematimba. You know Maddox, right? Maddox. Are you familiar with Maddox? I, I know Maddox. I know Maddox. I love his music. I love his album. Um, he yeah. put out just one it's album. Awesome. But awesome. Every song on that album is. So I know Maddox. Yeah. yeah. You know he used to live in Sweden, right? He was best in Sweden over 20 years and you know he's now living in Uganda no he went back he, he went back okay I'm not sure about that 
but uh, I know he was in Uganda recent or very recent. But the reason he was back in Uganda was because of a, of a domestic issue that is similar to this one of the Hakimis, where uh, he had an issue with his domestic partner. I don't know if he was married, if they were married, but they were living together. But it, it got him in a financial situation whereby he could not live in Sweden anymore. He had to come back to Uganda. <laughs> So uh, I believe if he had also put that in his mother's, his assets in his mother's name, mm. he, must, he must have been, <laughs> he could have been better. There is no guarantee because some mothers down here... African as as mothers, African mothers. <laughs> yeah, something should have been tried with African, African mothers. African mothers, before me, you know me, me, if I tried that with my, uh, if I tried that with my late mother, she's, she's deceased now, but if, if she was alive and I tried that with her, I believe I would even have brothers that I do not have up here. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. So Hakimi, uh, depending on how you see it, it was a genius move because it saved his wealth. It was a bad move, very weak. Uh, like I don't appreciate that, especially from the perspective of trying to grow and make a relationship work. The point at which he started moving his assets into his mother's name was the point at which he retreated and let the relationship probably stray and, and, and get weaker and weaker. Maybe he saw red flags. No, I mean, even when you see those red flags. In the flags, relationship, that part, at, at the end of the day, we should remember that we're outside the relationship. All we're seeing is from the outside. I agree. <laughs> I agree. There are a lot of things that be happening there that we do not see. But yeah. Me, me, I'm happy for him that he does not get to lose half of his money because I mean, he's, he, he's a star that I appreciate and I would feel sad for him even if I've never met him. I, I can relate the situation whereby I mean, professional footballers actually go through a lot mm. apart from what we see on uh, on the weekends when we see them playing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Man, this guy is trained so, so damn hard, like every damn day for. Imagine you. Uh, our corporate jobs and you go to, to work from nine to five but this guy is going to be running from nine to five <laughs> i mean they go through a lot for the money that they make yes yeah so it, it would have been sad but but then if you think about the lady also went through a lot for the time they were together for example if well, the man we, we, one moment yeah <laughs> a lot is not necessarily in terms of uh, running the field and doing the heavy lifting and stuff the lot could be your man being away for long hours every day your man coming back tired all the time because he's been training and you must understand that he's been training your man being from a certain country that is completely i mean whose culture you don't even understand very well but you must keep up with all his madness and bullshit and everything one moment one moment yeah, yeah. so all, all, all that she also kept up, put up with a lot. So, but the only unfortunate bit is, even divorcing by the way, do not get somebody stuck to a relationship. Mm. Do not get somebody stuck to a relationship simply because um, you have a lot of money or because you've been together for a certain period of time. No. There comes a time when somebody feels, you know what, we've tried this, doesn't work and everything, and don't think we should keep fighting over A, B, C, D, E. And I think if we are to be peaceful and be happy, the best thing to do is be a partner. Actually, that is also a nice thing for you to do for a partner in a relationship, especially when you get to certain stages, right? The lady, these guys might have got into that point. The mistake that most of us make right now is to think that she wanted to eject because she wanted money. We might be wrong. You mentioned something where he said, uh we are all outside of that relationship i don't think yes. she wanted money but i feel she wanted to be compensated i don't no, think that, she, no, she not that she wanted that's what mm. the law requires the law requires that when you divorce you share it's not what she wanted mm. the law requires that when you choose to part company but you can choose not to split to, you can choose to, to give up the property you can choose to give up what has to be split to you, you can choose to and would you do that would I do that? I mean, speaking from a female's perspective, it would have been hard for me to leave that man. <laughs> I would want some of that. But from a male perspective, I mean... You'd want that to forfeit that? 
Yeah. No. I mean, if I had my own money, why would I? I wouldn't stress over somebody else's money. No, that's what the law requires. If the law requires that you pay 10% tax on everything you import, 18%, for example, on what you import, even if you're importing and you're going to make a profit of so much, the law is only requesting you to pay 18%. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Only 18%. So, do not say uh, that's what she, she, she wanted or she probably didn't even want that. All she wanted was to be out of the relationship. Actually, do you know that when you eject such a relationship, one, you stop being accountable to that person. If you're feeling bad that he's a cheat and stuff, you stop worrying about that because it's official that you're no longer with them. They're, you get what I'm saying? That is a lot of peace. Mm. When you eject that kind of relationship, you actually probably want... This person has been psychologically torturing you, but at, at the point of rejecting, you start mm. feeling better that, wait a minute, I'm now all by myself. I'm responsible mm. for me and stuff. So that's probably what she was looking for. I'm speaking for <laughs> the females on the other side, but all in all, Hakimi... That was a genius move. Uh, the lady whose name I don't even know, that was yeah, gross. She's a famous actress in Spain. Famous actress <laughs> in Spain, that was gross miscalculation. Yeah.